Tonight on Podcast Them Down, it's Hard Rock Maiden. Just the maiden you like. Social issues and sleaze. <laughs> Coming at you, it's no prayer for the dying. Podcast Them Down! Hail Metal Nation, it is we, Tim, Matt, and Doug. It is May, so we're in the middle of Iron Maiden. We are reviewing the entire Iron Maiden studio discography. And, uh, yeah, the last one was a bit contentious, so, um, I'm hoping, uh, I'm hoping we can come back together and heal some, uh, some wounds, perhaps. Heal <laughs> no some wounds. prayer for the dying. What? Uh, well, maybe. Maybe. Okay, well, Iron Maiden certainly didn't, because, uh, <laughs> so Adrian Smith, uh, in the break between, um, Seventh Son and No Prayer... Uh, put out a solo album and uh, mm-hmm. Bruce Dickinson started working with Yannick Gers on his solo album. And then um, <laughs> this article is so fucking wordy. Okay. So <laughs> then they, um, they put out another live album. Cause I, I guess mm-hmm. we're doing that like constantly at this point, which I uh, can't fault them for. We should note that if you, if you're a, if you're an Iron Maiden chronologist, uh, Iron Maiden was pretty good at releasing an album nearly every year in the beginning. Uh, and they, and they kept up that pace, I believe, but now they're putting out like kind of like special live albums doing more stuff. So the, the distance between each album is beginning to stretch. Yeah, so yeah, and then I was going to say this is when their relationship with Derek Rigg started to be very strained. Oh, and, so, oh, and I'm sure you'll talk about the the two covers and <laughs> something I meant to mention. Endless. Apparently, uh, for Seven Sun, they went to Derek Riggs and just said, "Make something weird," <laughs> and that's that's yeah, where that's Seven Sun thing. cover comes from. <clears throat> so, um, it's progressive. Yeah, so uh, the Iron Maiden started working on uh, No Prayer for the Dying, and they decided they wanted to be stripped down. And Adrian Smith said, nah, uh, we, we, I want to keep doing uh, the total shit that was the last two albums. And so (laughs) they, uh, they fired him and Yannick Gers, who was working with Bruce Dickinson, comes in to take his spot. And in October, I, I, in fairness, I think he quit. Not every band is iced earth. All right. What? Well, no, okay. So, in the six billion words that that's this article, it doesn't say if he was quit or fired. So I assumed he was mm. fired. So <laughs> that's yeah. So uh, again, if you disagree with uh, anything we say, uh, we have an email just for you. It's you're wrong. You're and- wrong. Podcast and we we will be reading any message we get there. <laughs> so, oh yeah, and uh, explaining why in fact we're right. <laughs> so uh, October 1990, uh, uh, no prayer for the dying comes out. So uh, I believe so they wanted they wanted it stripped down, straightforward, reminiscent of the earlier material. And uh, is this the one they were recorded in a barn? Yeah. The, yep. the next four albums are all recorded in Steve Harris's barn in Essex. Yeah. Well, apparently Good Bruce old Essex. Bruce didn't like it. They they like fixed it up as time went on. But <laughs> they when they recorded this first one, Dickinson states this idea was a mistake, commenting that it was shit. It was a shit sounding record and I wish we hadn't done it that way. At the time I was as guilty as anyone else in going, Oh great. Look, we're all covered in straw. What a larf. (laughs) I didn't think it sounded notably worse than I, I don't think so either, but well, at least not the recording. Yeah. The recording. Um, Yeah. So yeah, the production's fine. Uh, yeah, same with fear. We'll get to that. Uh, it, I don't know. People make ACDC comparisons to me. 
if they're it's honestly it's a and maybe i'm completely crazy but a little guns and roses ish no like the killer's sound with appetite for destruction fear is definitely very acd ish well yeah <clears throat> when did when did uh gun and roses really hit it was around this time but was it's it around this time was it's it like, while they were recording this though i believe use your illusions is 1991 that was later. um i think appetite was maybe 88 yeah okay so uh, you could see you could see the label come into them and say we want this. yeah <laughs> no. yeah well and that, that's because this is in a sense i think them trying to be more commercial the, which they call street here yeah. <laughs> um and this record and fear are just amazing because this is a band choosing to fail like <laughs> They could have made good music, and they chose to release this. Uh, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> uh, I mean it, it's a, it's hard rock maiden. Uh, yeah. Bruce Dickinson does the that very again. He can sing, and he accidentally does a few times <laughs> on this record. But <laughs> most of it, the, that raspy kind of more American style. He seems tired, like. We, I, was, I, w- I we, wonder if that's hindsight, you know. Well, I don't know because if you compare, we we were talking about how um, Bruce Dickinson. If you look at the uh, Wasted Years video and looks at him now, he looks pretty much the same. But it seems like there must be like a, a, a Dorian Gray portrait. It seems like all of <laughs> Bruce Dickinson's age exists in this record and the next record. Like somehow between 1989 and 1993, whatever decrepitness and kind of like world weariness that would exist in him were sort of magnified and, and isolated in time. <laughs> the, uh, yeah, and, and somewhere like, in time. No, I, I agree, and uh, like especially the next record. Uh, we'll get we'll get to some of the vocal choices there, but th- I mean, this album it's like they they really okay. What do we open with? Well, the war. So let's 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 uh, let's take a day and write something. We never talked about the tail gunner. Yeah, we're known for songs um, about planes. What if we write another one yeah, of them? No, I think just do I a think this plotting is plotting mid tempo. I think this is going. But they 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 look at what they've done. It's like oh, Ace's High was really yeah. successful. Let's do let's do that again. How about tail gunner? <laughs> yeah, that's that sounds that's right. It, you know, but but I, hard rock now and. I don't like most of the times they try and be funny. I do like the pun in this song, though. What's the pun? I missed it. Uh, nail that fucker. Ah. Oh, uh, yeah, yeah. Okay. Okay. Yeah, so rest That's of the track list, uh, just for those keeping score at home, uh, Tail Gunner, as we mentioned, Holy Smoke, No Prayer for the Dying, Public Enema, Number One, Fate's Warning, the assassin run silent, run deep, hooks in you, bring your daughter to the slaughter and Mother Russia. From, now, we should also mention that Bring Your Daughter to the Slaughter was recorded uh, for uh, Night uh, Nightmare on Elm Street five. Really? <laughs> That's great. Yeah. But it, it I, was a solo song by Bruce Dickinson. I have to correct that you. Just and threw I, on here. It's and I think tattooed millionaire is starting to be this sound. I, I need that to correct sense. you. The song is Bring Your Daughter to the Slaughter. To the Slaughter. That's right. There is an ellipsis in there that you were okay. ignoring. That, that's all right. That's a good. That's, 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 that's an important correction. And that is the only song, by the way, that was uh, after Dickinson le- left. Oh, spoiler alert. Dickinson leaves in 1993. <laughs> Wait, what? Uh, that is the I didn't only notice. song from this album that they ever played again live. <laughs> After he left, yeah, I, I, you know, which is interesting because, th- th- like the this everything's just mediocre. It's not terrible, and th- they do do some interesting things. Like Holy Smoke is about televangelists. Yeah, they don't. They've never done these social issues things. I think Public Enema Number One is about greed. It's I, um, yeah, but it's like a like something a middle schooler would come up with. Yeah, no. yeah. That, that's fair. 
I, I mean, I think uh, Tail Gunner is an okay song. Uh, I think Bring Your Daughter is stupid, but, you know, it's just Die With Your Boots On again. It is. But it's a catchy tune. Well, that's why I don't like uh, it, it, because it's it's the substance of the song is Bring Your Daughter to the Slaughter. I mean, but, yeah, I get just as much satisfaction from that reading the song title <laughs> than listening to the song, because that's all the song is. But doesn't knowing that it was a a horror film like track somehow mediate that a little bit? Okay, so my response to that would be that it should have stayed on the movie soundtrack. I mean, just you know, cause, to review. Because they're like, we need one more song and all of our ideas are shit. Hey, Bruce, how about your song? Well, we should also realize that this song exists on three albums. It exists on this album. <laughs> it exists on Tattooed Millionaire and The Nightmare on Elm Street 5, the Dream Child uh, soundtrack album. And it's the best song on all three albums. <laughs> <laughs> well, and, and there's been a dynamic that's existed in Maiden where Steve Harris hears Dickens and Solo stuff and then says, no, this is Maiden. So, like, there's this song, and then the the weird spoken word stuff at the start of Book of Souls is from a Bruce Dickinson concept album that they just took out of context. Oh, really? And, <laughs> yeah. That's and we'll, really... We'll talk about Bruce Dickinson solo stuff in another episode. That's re- they're but, really, uh, like, it, <laughs> fucking people who like, uh, you know, like Bruce's solo stuff. It's like, here, pay for it again. <laughs> I mean... Do you think this song can can even be put in the same league as Wasps' Savage? I don't think so. <laughs> Wasps? I have in my notes that Assassin is absolutely wretched, but I can't remember why. Is it the vocal delivery or the music? Uh, yes. All um, of the above? It, it has a... This is like... I feel like Assassin's is the last vestige of the progressive element for a while it has like a weird it has a weird cadence um it starts with this like kind of shuffly dickada 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 and then it just goes nowhere this is the begin. Uh, we're, we're getting more and more i mentioned the iron maidenism beginning um but this is like when we have there's uh if you think of uh, a, a song as a head a body and a tail uh, this is when the head and the body are no longer connected in any way, and you just have a bunch of Frankensteins. Uh, this is by no means the culmination of the Frankensteins, but there's just a lot of like weird, like, well, that happened for a minute, and now this. <laughs> yeah. Well, they. Uh, and I, uh, I'm reading on the bonus disc, the the reissue in '95. They covered Golden Earring. I didn't know there was more than one Golden okay. Earring song. <laughs> Uh, 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 Doug, you- so I think um, Hooks and You is pretty catchy, except that it's about Charlotte the Harwood and continuing that, so it's automatically terrible. <laughs> right. Another uh, Dickinson. He got a lot of writing on here. That's Dickinson and Smith. Yes. That was his one that, contribution. That's right. He, yeah, he, uh, that was the one thing he did before quitting. <laughs> and uh, I, Fate's warning is not something they would ever. Pull. It's like we you never want to hear that live, but it's fine. And then uh, Mother Russia, I actually like. Yeah, I mean Mother Russia again is I I feel like a holdover song from the Seventh Son somewhere in time era, and it's it's trying to go back to the historical epic. Yeah, well, kind of. You know, uh, on, but you're right. It's like two things simplified and reduced in yeah. a way that actually really simplifies and reduces what they're doing too. And it's funny because it's also the epic of this track uh, of the CD, and it's only uh, five and a half minutes. But it is the yeah, longest. Exactly, track. it's the epic. <laughs> Seventh yeah, song, you by can't the way. Complain about song length or album length. This is the one time right. uh, going forward where that's true. Let's see, uh, basically, uh, poor critical reception. Sputnik re- uh, Music said, uh, No Prayer for the Dying is a plain, listless record that never really gets itself going. And I, I have to agree with that. Like, it's, yeah. uh, 
I mean, bring your daughter to the slaughter. I don't like, but the rest of it, I just like, don't care about, which might be worse than my hatred. of the I, two I disagree. Album. So if you, we saw maiden live and they put out tail gunner, what would bother you more hearing tail gunner or blood brothers one more fucking time? That's yeah. I mean, mm. it, uh, tail gunner is a good album opener. I did have, uh, I was, uh, I I had uh, I was optimistic about this album <laughs> when Dale Gunner came on, but at the same time, I'm like, come on, pick something else to write about. <laughs> yeah, uh, yeah. The oh, I had a oh, the, they did credit the bass tech as the keyboardist on here, so there are keyboards, but yeah. but not as apparent Pretty pronounced. as keyboards. Yeah, well, I think the fact that I don't remember shows you how unmemorable this album is. <laughs> so. Um, did you want to talk about the album cover before we throw some numbers around? Okay, I mean, it's a pretty boring album cover. Yeah, which uh, one though? <laughs> oh, what? Holy shit! Is yeah, this is so. I forget exactly. Like Derek Riggs is accused Maiden of bilking their fans because I think they did a bunch of singles that all had kind of like a different Eddie pictures. It was everyone wants tail gutter on a single. And then the, <laughs> this, the uh, cover is very good. The, what he delivered, but it's kind of comic booky with the um, night as one color. I mean, it's, it's like yeah. seven colors. It looks like a newspaper comic strip. Uh, but the, uh, what's, what's your, the manager didn't like the guy so they made him take it out and uh, released one with where he's just got a claw, kind of just defeating the point of the rising from the grave. And this is the first Eddie we see that isn't in the continuity of Eddie right. being uh, the various things that happened to him in the rest of the records. Yeah, so it's back, it's back to the killers, disc. Eddie. And yeah, he's holding up a guy with his with his hand and then... Yeah, then they redid it, so now he's just like doing this. <laughs> so there's no guy anymore. I mean, it, it's an uninspired cover either way, yeah. but the Derek Riggs original was more interesting. Yeah, so the cover for Holy Smoke had uh, has like Eddie holding up a TV and standing on a burning pile of televisions with uh, televangelists on them. And then yeah, now that looks cool. Bring your daughter to the slaughter looks reminiscent of the uh, somewhere in time cover. And is that Eddie's daughter in the in the picture? I guess I suppose so. If that were my daughter, and I'd I, put some I, clothes on. Damn it! <laughs> I feel like there's a Nightmare on Elm Street reference in here. Oh uh, yeah, this got what it was. Uh, let's, I, I wonder. Yeah. So both single covers are way better, <laughs> much better than, than, the, than the, than the alternate cover, especially. Um, yeah. So, and I guess the, that's when they started having the falling out with, uh, Derek Riggs. I don't really know the, the whole history there. Yeah. I mean, he, he kept like, he'd done literally all of their art through this point. Um, and then uh, it used to be on all his on his website. Actually, he had hilarious commentary on everything. A, a lot of which has come off. I checked, unfortunately. But um, yeah, the the relationship went south around here. Mm. And uh, I found a picture. Fear of, him. of the dark is the first non Derek Eddie, at least on the album cover. If if you uh, needed a picture, if you like did an image search of bloke, I bet he'd come up. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Derek Riggs. Yeah, yeah. He just—he looks like the uh, the living embodim, embodiment of a bloke. Embodiment of a bloke. <laughs> yep. Okay. I, let's uh, let's rate this thing. So, I think it's all right. Ready, ready. Uh, start uh -huh. typing your emails to you're wrong at uh, podcastanddown dot com. This album is better than Somewhere in Time and Seventh Son. <laughs> but not by much. I'm going to give it a four and a half. Huh. I don't like 
I I disagree with your reasoning, but I uh, I almost agree with your score. <laughs> this is a five. Um, we're sort of crossing the line from listenable to less listenable. Um, but I I want to leave room for the inevitable free fall that is to come. Um, so I'm gonna I'm gonna say five. Yeah, it, it's a five. Uh, it's a technically competent record. Most of the songs are at least decent and and work at a basic level. And uh, Yannick Gers doesn't have any writing credits, but uh, we may not like the spin around thing that he does. Hey. Uh, but he is a a good. Wow, it's uh, like he was there. <laughs> A dirtier guitarist than Adrian Smith, but a good guitarist still. He's, Yannick does all the stupid bullshit on stage that I, I don't like. He like flailing his arm around, but like he's not actually hitting the strings. And uh, you, you know, uh, kicking leg out and like sitting on his ankle, and uh, I don't know, spinning around like a fucking moron. <laughs> like, uh, stop it! I get it. The man can write some songs, as we'll see. Yeah, so, well, maybe. <laughs> so, uh, consistent with our previous scoring methodology, I will just put down five for No Prayer for the Dying, and we All right. move on to Fear of the Dark. So, Fear of the Dark? Uh, oh, oh, real quick. Uh, no Prayer on the Road Tour is the name of the tour for No Prayer for the Dying. And I, uh-huh. this is important. Um, they, the, the direct support for Iron Maiden was Anthrax in 93. Really? And I mean, that's pretty cool. That was Anthrax, like, on their way to becoming, uh, y- you know, doing their weird alternative thing. <laughs> so, mm. um, we, you know, we need to uh, figure out what month we can work Anthrax into the thing so we can... Uh, so we can talk about anthrax properly, but um, yeah, they they so they had John Bush. Okay, so they were starting to do the the um, alternathrax, <laughs> um, but no doubt, uh, put on a great show. And then on top of this, Maiden has been adding wattage and lights. Constantly, nonstop, since the beginning, as we have noticed. But now, on this tour, they opted for a less elaborate production style, including only mobile and the big eddy, traditional lighting rig, and large backdrops. Hmm. So they're so suddenly, fucking around with what works, huh? Yeah. Suddenly... <laughs> Like, oh, I saw Maiden every time it gets, the show gets bigger and better and bigger. And then I guess there's less budget because it's early 90s and like grunge yeah. is coming up and the money for the metals going down. And then they put out a, 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 a not well received album. So they have to strip back the, you know, all the pyros and stuff. And uh, so I think that it, I think it probably uh, helped uh, the, uh, the it, it stopped their momentum of like being able to hold on to the, their commanding live show because that was that was part of the that was part of the draw for Maiden wasn't necessarily the album as much as the live show and all the okay, live album yeah, that's true <laughs> so and I think they sort of because of the theatrics and all at least in the middle eighties probably uh, uh, played bigger shows than you would think from their record sales, at least in the U S but the, the production on the uh, seventh sons tour is just astounding from what I remember. Like it looks like there's a hundred feet because, you know, smoke and like a mountain backdrop and uh, Bruce Dickinson singing in front of that. So it may have also been that they hit a high. Yeah. Like, where do you go uh, from but, here? Down. Well, I do think it's interesting. Um, so we, uh, 1990, that's also the year of Painkiller, and Painkiller is also, in a sense, a stripped-down record, too, uh, in that it, like, takes the Priest lyrics and makes them even 
simpler and dumber, arguably, though it's an amazing, <laughs> the best record ever, uh, that introduces the the uh, thrash speed sound, and even their set was simpler on on that tour. Yeah, but, uh, but they sort of they did it right. <laughs> did it right. You know? yeah. They didn't. Uh, well, let's just do a bunch of crap hard rock and not try. Yep. Oh. Yeah. All right. So they uh, <sighs> returned to the barn on Steve Harris's property and um, Great. brought in Martin Birch to supervise the sound this time. Um, but uh, they uh, and well, then they he, recorded. He did uh, No Prayer, too. Uh, this is the album where he's on his way out, if I recall. Like, this is Steve Harris producing and him, like, co-producing. Yeah, so they um and they recorded uh Fear of the Dark, the first double studio LP, but you know, people of the CD era, it's it's fifty seven minutes fifty eight seconds, so it fits comfortably mm-hmm. on a CD. <laughs> um and they uh let's talk about the album artwork. So uh <laughs> so it's Eddie as a tree. <laughs> Which is which is just funny to say. Like I I I do like this artwork, but Eddie as a tree is just a funny phrase to me. Um, well, I like to think of I like to think of the story behind this artwork is that Eddie is waiting around for something cool to happen, and the tree grows around him. Yeah, like it, it's a witty cover uh, that's kind of ruined by the song. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Um, we wanted to. Yeah. Uh, they said uh, we wanted to upgrade Eddie for the '90s. We wanted to take him from the sort of comic book horror creature and turn him into something a bit more straightforward, so that he became even more threatening. So now he's a. Tree. Wait, 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 wait. <laughs> what problem? Now you read that, and then I'm looking at Eddie the tree, and I'm trying to figure out what those two things have anything to do with each other. <laughs> So this was not done by Derek Riggs. It was done by uh, Melvin Grant. And okay. this, this cover artwork, I love the cover artwork. It is the best thing about this album. <laughs> because, uh, yeah, I'm, I'm not going to disagree. There's nothing redeeming about, <laughs> about this album. Um, so, tra- so we start with Be Quicker, Be Dead, Trackless. which is like their attempt at painkiller. Uh and that amazing Bruce Dickinson scream, <laughs> then not try rasp vocals. Uh, and, it, and it's all downhill from this uh, inauspicious start. I think, yeah. Yeah. And I think once again, they, they picked a good opener. Oh, and Be Quick or Be Dead is about the stock market. Oh, even worse. Wait, what? <laughs> Is. Yes, it's uh, it's got Eddie. The, song's about- the the single cover has Eddie threatening a guy in a. Uh, oh, it's the killer's Eddie, <laughs> not a tree, uh, threatening like a guy in a suit while there's newspapers about the markets. So this is you know there's ticker tapes. <laughs> when Metallica got rich, they I shouldn't have worn this shirt. <laughs> but, uh, when Metallica got rich, you know they um. They invested in art, you know, and then, but when the Beatles and Iron Maiden got rich, they started talking about taxes and investments. <laughs> um, yeah, and it's more just weird social issues stuff, which they don't really do, except in the 90s. Well, I think, yeah. I think it's interesting you bring that up, because uh, From Here to Eternity is another social issue. It shows the failing no, what, of the what, English. Ripping off ACDC? No, it's the failing of the English department in teaching Steve Harris in, in British public schools, <laughs> teaching Steve Harris that you need more than a song title to write a fucking chorus. Oh, well, okay. Here Not on the East End, you don't, Tim. <laughs> oh, well, it's hell ain't a bad in- place. Apparently. That this horrible uh, records uh, single cover doesn't have Eddie on it for some reason. I believe "From Here to Eternity" is another Charlotte the Harlot song. So let's just correct. skip it. 
it tells the story of Charlotte going on a fateful motorcycle ride with the devil. Oh, that explains oh so and much about the video I didn't get. A video with this. Oh, oh, well, watch this. I think no, we've already did watched you guys it watch for this Patreon. Video? <laughs> Yeah. Okay. I mean, for good. I mean, we will have watched it for Patreon. Oh, remember there were, that explains who the woman was on the tricycle we thing. We thought they was were. It, that's the, we like, thought post-apocalyptic one. Right? Yes, we thought they were leftover like man of war <laughs> extras yeah. from uh, from uh, Return of the Warlord. I was waiting for those women with the uh, bat wings to show up, but they never did. Nope. <laughs> I think those are the same cranes in the quicker be dead video as in the beginning of Hellraiser. I've been oh. meaning to look that up for 20 years. I know, I know it's Iron Maiden and not May No War, but I did want to say that when they presented King Charles with the crown in the ring, I was butt sized. <laughs> <laughs> butt sized. <laughs> All right, so, so here's where I'm going to say something controversial because we know Tammy's Doug position loves, on writing I, catchy songs. Doug loves and strangers. That's what the controversial thing is. This is Doug's favorite song. Afraid to Shoot Strangers is a good song. A, the boys' version. Ooh. Ah! T- ah! Ooh. I didn't expect that's that. That, that, was, that took a left turn I didn't expect. That sound you hear well, right now is people well, throwing here, their phones the, out the window. <laughs> we'll talk about Blaze during the Blaze records, but we should put these records in the context of his voice. There are four oh. old Maiden records in which he's okay. perfectly equipped to sing the songs very well. Okay, you know what? You know what? I will give you that. Out of all the Iron Maiden songs sung by, sung by Blaze Bailey, this is among the best. <laughs> So oh. yeah, and, uh, and Bruce Dickinson again. His vocals, uh, he's he accidentally sings a few times, but he's he's just like I'm doing this rasp <laughs> thing. That's how it is. Uh, so we get to uh, we'll we'll talk about afraid to shoot strangers when we watch that video in the Bailey era video review. Well, you guys watched some of it. Oh, uh, part two of yes, this. Yes, but we left off. I mean, we, we will have left that. off. <laughs> These we did so many videos. By the way, this is a good time to sign up for Patreon. We did so many videos. They go into June, <laughs> <laughs> and and there will be more because remember we stopped uh, in the nineties. So there, there's going to be even more Iron Maiden video commentary coming up. So I'll nice. join the Patreon. Well, with link all in the, the description. The dynamics and the great material they've produced. Maiden is a double month. Uh, yeah, absolutely. Because I, I think we may at the end of this, we probably have thirty to forty percent of the of music measured by minutes still to listen to, even though we'll be through two thirds of the records. Man, I, I, I just want to move on to June this priest sometime. Oh yeah. I was trying to work Black uh, Sabbath into one Black September. <laughs> That's a really so I, uh, I was thinking Black September. We'd have to talk about the political implications of calling it that and whether we'd be comfortable with them. But uh, Black September. Probably not. Yeah. Maybe not. <laughs> we'll figure Maybe it out. Maybe not. Uh, I also love so that on covered this song much better than Iron Maid never played it. <laughs> Yeah, the it, it suffers from Steve Harris uh, and the the chorus, but uh, I do like the song basically. Yeah, it's an interesting yeah. song. And then we Not get bad. "Fear Is the Key," another interesting one. This is actually about AIDS, uh, mm-hmm. AIDS HIV epidemic, uh, with some accurate statements like uh, "Nobody cares till someone famous dies." The the intro to this song sounds a lot like a, a collaboration song between Sting and some world music artist. Um, <laughs> the, but yeah, it's uh, yeah, it's fine. What's what's interesting is these uh, the songwriting credits, like um, the "Be Quick or Be Dead" is Dickinson Gers. And then two Harris songs. Now we're on another Dickinson Gers. And then it goes Harris, mm-hmm. Dickinson Gers, Harris, Dickinson Murray, 
Harris Gers, Dickinson Murray, Harris Gers. So every other song just about is a Steve Harris one. <laughs> so, yeah. And uh, yeah, and the all others the things that are sort of the others are not. It's just interesting social issues or like commercial rock is Bruce Dickinson. Yeah, it's just interesting that they they alternated um, between the 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 songwriting like that for, for the well, for hey, the that's sequencing one way to do a track order. Apparently, yeah. that's some thought. Somebody uh, thought it. So, childhood's ends about uh, global hunger. Wasting love is about uh, the uh, emotional emptiness of promiscuity. There's a lot going on in this album. Yeah, it looks to me, the single cover makes it look like it's about tattooing. Mm -hmm. (laughs) What's The Fugitive about? (laughs) The last movie Steve Harris saw. Written by Steve Harris, that's right. (laughs) All right. The Fugitive movie. Man, uh, I'm just waiting till we get to Weekend Warrior so I can complain about it. Oh, you know, uh, like Weekend Warrior? <laughs> or let's just jump ahead. Uh, Weekend Warrior <laughs> is so bad. I think I understand why people like Fear of the Dark, <laughs> the, the song. Because I- oh, oh, we got a. When I finish on Weekend Warrior, then we're going back to the apparition. I actually think it sounds like incidental music for some like uh, bad rock and roll themed movie. It's like when I first started writing for Rolling Stone, I didn't realize all the kinds of adventures I'd be getting into. Uh, I I've covered in the past how. Uh how much I don't like Fear of the Dark, the song, but I was, I was so annoyed by Weekend Warrior that it's, it's five and a half minutes, but it felt like an eternity. And as we know, hell is from here to eternity. But, yeah. That uh, I was glad when Fear of the Dark started and I was like, oh, good. And, um, you know, then Fear of the Dark happened to me and I just, I came away from this album just with a nauseous feeling. But you know, like that, that, how, that is true. It felt like a welcome oasis. Like I had been wandering through a desert and then I just saw the comforting embrace of fear of the dark. At least it was and, an Iron Maiden sounding yeah. song, you know? <laughs> with with the Well, it, to me the most annoying song is the apparition. Okay, also written, uh, also written by Harrison Gers, just like Weekend Warrior. Maybe that's yeah. Maybe that's why like, they're on the back. Bruce hat. Dickens is like, "Hey, how about I shout <laughs> from the perspective of the ghost? I'm just going to shout everything." Well, ghosts don't like loud <laughs> just noises, just like a ghost would do. Uh, any comments on Judas? Be my guide. Nope. Me neither. <laughs> no, it's okay. Uh, I, 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 Judas, be my guide, and uh, wasting love are interesting. Very commercial songs. Like Wasting Love is probably the purest power ballad they did in the you know the eighties hard rock sense. Waste oh yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, pro- but you know, they're they're they they're trying to reinvent themselves as all the bands did. Every single one. Yeah. Um they're trying to rein it in. For the nineties to uh hold on to their market share against <laughs> Nirvana <laughs> and uh they're they're not doing well. Yeah, and you're it's kind of an uncomfortable mix of like they're still trying to give maiden fans a little bit of what they want, but then also get the, the radio because this was that period where you uh where hard rock wasn't completely dead. Like this is yeah. Alice Cooper. Hey, stupid. Um, so uh, alternative was just killing it, but pure hard rock still had an audience right at this moment. Yeah. But it's a, it's a weird time. I'm looking at the number one albums of 1992. So Michael Jackson, dangerous Nirvana. Never mind. Garth Brooks, Rope in the Wind. 
the Wayne's World soundtrack. Oh, that was a good soundtrack, though. Def Leppard, Adrenalize, Criss Cross, The Black Crows. I wonder if they ever the wore long- their clothes forwards. <laughs> the longest run is Billy Ray Cyrus, oh. some gay ball. Another Garth Brooks record, Michael Bolton and Ice Cube. And the body, it, it's, wait, it's a wait, weird wait, time. Wait, 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 is that Michael Bolton and Ice Cube together? No, 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 no. no, no. I would listen I mean, to that. <laughs> Michael Bolton, Ice Cube duets. Yeah, I'm into that. <laughs> well, the other thing this album introduces, like, this is where <laughs> they forget to edit, like, anything ever. Yeah. Like, this is 58 minutes of insubstantial, airy, Dirty hard rock. Yeah, like I was gonna say, I wrote on your cut two songs, but really cut three songs. I would say cut twelve. <laughs> Where's it? Where's oh, my yeah, laughter? This it's interesting. Like this is both better and worse than No Prayer. No Prayer was like a flat, mediocre. Okay, this okay. is. Mediocre with a lot of woes. <laughs> <laughs> okay, okay, I, I, I can concede that. There's dynamic range of sorts. <laughs> I, I mean, be quick or be dead is novel. I like childhood's end. Eh, you know, some of these other songs. Uh, I guess I've discredited myself with "Afraid to Shoot Strangers." It's it's an okay song. It's not bad. It's it's a would should have been like a B side to something, but it's it has its place. It's in my top two of this album. All right, let's throw some numbers at this. Um, this is as bad as. <laughs> um. Let's see. It's as bad as Seventh Son, so I'm going to give it a four. I mean, <laughs> it's not as bad as Seventh Son, but it is a four. <laughs> yeah, it is a four. Oh, wow. Uh, that was easy. All right. Well, we got to wrap it up. And when we, uh, when we return on the next episode... Wait, wait. What? Uh, what? When we return... Uh, something great and happy. Because <laughs> if if you if you preview what's gonna happen, they're not gonna come back. I was gonna say we and we uh, <laughs> never mind. Thank you for listening to our least listened to episode ever. Well, no, that's the next one. <laughs> we'll Don't see. see that. All right, until next time, Metal Nation. Uh, make sure your tree is an eddy because uh, he'll. I, I don't know. He'll he'll get mad at you for crashing stock markets. Cast them down. I wish I was quicker dead. Man, that scream. <laughs> <laughs> <laughs>